<laughs> that's my fear. I'm always afraid that something's going to come crumbling down, like like the wall, like the ceiling. What if the ceiling just cracked down? How, how do you even know how much weight you can put on something? Hello and welcome to the Handy Women YouTube channel. I am your host, Geraldine Anello. I'm the founder of the Handy Women community, which you can find at the link below on Facebook. There's over 55,000 of us. You can also find us on TikTok, on Instagram. We're really creating a movement here at Handy Women. And why? That's because our mission is to empower women with tools. And so today we're going to talk about a hanging porch swing uh, that Adrian Engel made. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Geraldine. How's it going? I am in love with this. I am packing my bags and I'm coming right over for a glass of wine. How inviting is this bed? <laughs> ah, well, I'll, I can tell you firsthand that when it's not raining, it's very comfortable. <laughs> it is awesome. So I get very scared personally about hanging things. I am the proud of owner of a swing chair that has now been in my closet for over six months. Oh my God. So... I am so curious to hear the wizardry that goes between putting things that look heavy that will not fall when you sit on them. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, the first step is to make sure that the joists that you hang them on can support the weight of the structure. So in my case, um, this is a, a newer construction home. And so um, I'm the first owner and I ask the general contractor directly will these joists support hanging a porch swing? And they said, yes. So I didn't have to do, I didn't have to do any special measurements because I got the blessing from my general contractor. So safety first, that is an excellent question. No, um, that's my fear. I'm always afraid that something's gonna come crumbling down, like, like the wall, like the ceiling. What if the ceiling just cracked down? How, how do you even know how much weight you can put on something? Well, so, some of that, um, I don't remember the exact calculation, but you can tell by looking at the size of the joists too. So building code stipulates that different sized porches have to use different sized joists. Um, if the porch is longer, then they have to be thicker. So in this case, these joists, because of the size of the porch and the spacing of the joists are sturdy enough to support something like this. Can I see, can I see those closer? Yes. How... And so how, if you don't have the blessing of your contractor, how do you know which ones to get? Um, well, in that case, you could ask, um, you could ask somebody. So like a structural engineer is really good to ask about ceiling, um, hanging things like this. Um, that's, that's their job. They do these types of calculations. Um, in this case, these, uh, you know, can you see these brackets here? So this is a heavy duty, swing hang kit that I purchased at Home Depot. It comes in a set of two because they're traditionally used for um, like a porch swing that you might only want two, but I wanted four hanging points. So I bought two sets. That way I would have four of them. And you can see they're wide enough to go into the joists. And the types of uh, bolts that you use are important too. You have a couple options. So these are heavy duty lag bolts that came with the kit and they're screwed directly into the joists. They are not good going anywhere. But another option is that you can get eye bolts, which um, have like a loop at the end of them. And that's where your chain or your rope would attach. Um, I like this system because this particular rope um, frays kind of easily and running it up like this allowed me to tie fewer knots and deal with less fraying. And it still gave me four hanging points. I see. When you put it up, do you put it up with a cord on it or do you just put them up first and then have the cord run through them later? Let me tell you about the cheat for hanging this. You get yourself some uh, five gallon paint buckets and you support the bench on the buckets. And then you run your rope through and you tie everything off and then you remove the buckets. How, um, did, you put up, how did you put up those, those joists? I think you call them at the top. Is it, it so, what is that with? So these wooden beams are called joists and these are the ceiling support structures that you'll see under any kind of like deck or right. a port. Right. And then these are hanging brackets um, specifically made for swings. Um, so that's why I purchased them because they're used for this specific reason. Um, and these also, too, you'll notice they have a nice hole here. So there are different size rope um, that you can select. When you're hanging a swing like this, you want to get something that's at least three quarters of an inch thick. 
I went for one inch thick because this is bigger than a standard porch swing because it's a you know it's a day bed um size it's a it's a little bit longer than a twin mattress and not quite as deep so but it's close to a twin mattress size so because of that I wanted the thicker rope um, and these brackets happen to accommodate being able to run a one inch thick rope through because they're about an inch and a quarter on the opening how did you put up the brackets um so they come with instructions. They tell you what size drill bit to use. Um, so I drilled the, the specified holes and then I have, um, I have an attachment for my drill to start screwing the bolts in um, here. But ultimately we ended up having to use um, a ratchet, a hand crank ratchet so that we could get more torque because the drill just won't get them in all of the way and you get more leverage um, from a ratchet. I also got some really fabulous tips from the ladies in the, in the handy woman group because I got stuck and I was having some trouble. So this is a hardwood and sometimes the sawdust from screwing it in gets in the way. So they said, take it out and use some dish soap and then screw it back in with a ratchet. And that works great to get the brackets in all the way. So I learned a lot from your group. Liquid. It's always working for so many things. Yeah. Okay. So then you, so you put the brackets up then you put the cord yes yeah so the brackets go up first and then the swing um gets elevated on some paint buckets um in this case i wanted it a little bit higher so i actually put some additional um pieces of wood on top of the buckets just to raise it up and then i ran the rope through and one thing that i did to keep the rope from fraying is that i wrapped the ends with duct tape um and you so did not I did. I wrapped the end with duct tape so that it would not fray and it made it really easy to run through the holes. But and the then it's done now. And then after I tied the knots, I took the duct tape off and, and wow. loosened the edges. What kind of knots did you do and how easy or hard was it to make sure it was it worked? Like basic overhand knots. Um, you can do that on the bottom. And because I don't have any knots at the top, I didn't have to worry about making any special kinds of knots. But um, if you are doing a four-point system where you're cutting your rope on the top and the bottom, there are specialty types of knots that you want to use for the top um, eye hook. That's another reason why I chose to run it this way. I didn't want to have to tie with um, any specialty knots at the top and get paranoid about it coming down. <laughs> and this bed is beautiful. Is that structure of the bed, some, how, where did you find it? Did you buy it with this intent in mind or did you um, print it yourself? I designed this sort of, <clears throat> um, so I looked at some existing uh, DIY types of tutorials for daybed swings. Um, I saw some that I liked, but they weren't exactly my style. But it, what I learned from those was like general construction and what's important to build something stable and like how to, you know, how to put it together. Um, and then I looked at some that were for sale on some websites and I found a style that I liked and I kind of copied it. So that's, but I had to put together my own plans for the size of this cushion here. And I added some extra reinforcement structures that I didn't see in the picture of the one that I found online. So, you know, I, I found something that I liked and I copied it um, using Perfect. methods that I learned from some blogs. You built it yourself. I did. Wow. And you used wood and you cut all the pieces and put it all together. I, yep, I did. So we've got um, the, the arms here are made with one by fours. And then underneath the cushion, we've got um, one by eights that are lining the bottom. And you'll see here on the bottom, I've got two by fours that are running underneath. And these are the support structures that, um, that the ropes are really attached to. So I'm not putting any weight on the arms here. The holes are really just to keep the ropes out of the way. But the whole thing is really supported by these two by four rails on the bottom. And in the back here, um, I've got some more one by fours and then I've got a little one by two just to act as like um, an end cap here so that it has a nice finished edge um, supporting everything. And did you paint it once it was all built or did you paint every piece independently before putting it together? I constructed it first and then I put, um, I got a good quality outdoor primer and then I got a good quality outdoor paint. So it was all constructed and then I got two coats of primer and then I got two coats of outdoor paint on it. 
You mentioned that that mattress is not a twin size. It's a little bit bigger. Where did you find a mattress that size? Aha. Uh -huh. So this is actually not a mattress I ordered from a, um, from a boating supply store. So this is, um, this is a, a foam cushion that's rated for marine uh, grade use on boats. Um, and I, I purchased that because it's waterproof. So as you can see, my porch looks covered, but it's just a wooden deck so the water comes through. Um, so I needed something that was waterproof. So I purchased a waterproof cushion and this is one of the standard sizes that it happened to come in that was close to a twin mattress um, so that I could get something approximately the same size as what other people were building. And then the fabric, <clears throat> this, is, um, this is an outdoor canvas that I purchased, which is also waterproof. And I got this from, um, from Joann's, the, um, the, the craft and fabric store. I bought it from their website um, and I had them ship it to me. And then the thread that I use is a heavy duty um, thread that is rated for outdoor use um, on canvas and it's UV resistant. So it shouldn't break down under sunlight or moisture. It looks so happy. It is such an inviting place. I just want to come over, have Marita, something. <laughs> It's just so, it's such a happy, like you don't see that every day, that color, those vibrant colors. It's usually more, you know, beige and maybe dark, but you don't have the very, the vibrancy of this is really spectacular. And it's so playful with the cords and the red and the green. It, there's so much to it. It's, you, it's beautiful to look at. I mean, of course, I'm sure it's fun to sit on it, but just to look at is fun. Thanks. Well, I mean, I tried to pick the colors and the styles that, that match my personality and it also match more of the stuff inside of the house. And so, um, you know, I do a lot of mid-century modern stuff, but I didn't bring any of the, like the fun florals and I stuck with the geometrics, but I love, I love bold colors and I didn't want to fall into, um, you know, the modern farmhouse trap that a lot of people here in the South <laughs> end up doing in their houses. So I decided that a bold red and some like funky florals would be a fun addition to my porch. Good for you. It's spectacular. <laughs> Thanks. If you're watching this, write in the comments. Did you also build something completely from scratch? Uh, did you, do you have a day bed? Are you going to do a day bed now? <laughs> Tell me all your stories below. I want to hear about that. And make sure to like and subscribe for more. Thank you so much. Thanks, Adrienne.